Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome to episode seven of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we are getting logistical with pretty pipes. Let's get started. Before we begin, though, I do have a real quick interjection. Uh, if you didn't know, if you didn't see my latest community post, I have opened up a Discord uh, server for all of us to be able to go in and chat. So if you want to join that, go ahead and check out the description down below and uh, the links in there. You can join. We chat. We talk. We have fun. All kinds of good stuff. Join up if you want. Let's go. All right, everybody. Welcome back. In between episodes here, I went ahead and captured us a few of each animal type just so that we had them. I didn't know if in the future, you know, coming up, we're going to end up needing these guys. So I, uh, you know, did the thing. Luckily, we found this empty soul gem a while ago in one of our uh, in a chest somewhere where we were exploring, and it really helps out because I can just it, it's just basically a mob picker upper, so I can just pick them up and drop them off. If we go back to our create area, we're going to see I made a few changes to our design here. OK, so first off, we have clear glass from connected glass so we can see into here. And I went ahead and moved our uh, water wheels out and up one. So they're kind of floating here just in the middle, because if you remember correctly, we were only getting 192 stress units from each. And that didn't seem right to me. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 256 at, at full power. And that is correct. 256 is what it should be at. So I went ahead and moved them out and up, moved the water source back one so that it flowed over the top or flew over the top. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, either way, it was directly on top before. So now it flows directly over, down, and then loops around. Now, if you were to have soul sand, I believe here, you could have this full of water. And I have these dirt blocks here. You could just not have these dirt blocks. And if you have soul sand, it will, you know, fill the water back in and it'll cause it to be, I, I think you get a little bit more efficiency out of it, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, so outside of that, if you kind of can't see it, but we're getting 256 stress units per uh, water wheel now. So we have seven water wheels that gives us like about uh, 2048 plus 256. So uh, like 230, some 2300, 2400 stress units, something like that. Whatever math again, my strong suit, not the uh, anyway. So what we've done here is off of here. I have a gearbox directly coming out off of the uh, wheel, and then I have a large cog wheel coming off of that. And then I have that large cog wheel going into a small cog wheel. And when you do that, you double the speed of the um, system. You double the RPMs. And the, and the idea is that the small cog wheels are half of the circumference of the large cog wheel. So when you you know, for every one rotation of this, it's two rotations of this. So it doubles the speed. Bam, bam. So then I have that just being routed over here into this gearbox, which then goes into another large cog wheel, which goes into another small cog wheel, doubling the speed again. That goes into a gearbox, which is then pushing out to this shaft, which is a vertical gearbox which goes up here to a cog wheel and then those cog wheels then connect down here. I guess I don't really need this to be a cog wheel. This could be a shaft, but hey, it is what it is coming down here into our cog wheel, which goes into a millstone and then the same thing over here going into a mixer. And then we have a shaft just connecting into our mechanical press. So if we go back home and we take a look inside of our base, you'll kind of see how our setup is here. By the way, I mentioned this in our uh, last playthrough, FTB University, Quirk has this thing called the feeding trough, where if you put wheat or carrots or 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 seeds inside of here, it, the animals will automatically feed themselves and breed, which is pretty great. I don't have a farm set up yet. It's on our to-do list, so uh, we're not there just yet, but hey, it is what it is. So if we come inside of here, we can see we have our mechanical mixer set up with its basin, and it's using 256 stress units at its current speed. We have our mechanical press at 512 stress units, and then we have our millstone at 256. And if you remember last episode, when we pressed something with our mechanical press, how slow it was, it is much faster now, which is great. It's what I want to see. So I went ahead and 
pressed out a bunch of gold plates, iron plates, and tin plates, so that way we had a, bu a bunch of the stuff that's going to be needed uh, going forward. Now, we don't have the rods. I'm still going to working on getting the rods. We need to get into tinkers, but uh, we're, we're getting there. So let me go ahead and try and clean up inventory here a little bit from all of that stuff I had going on. Let me tell you, it took me a while to figure out the best way to do that, um, to do this for the uh, this guy. To get all this set up, I, I, I built and tore down a couple times just to figure it out. You can see we moved the mechanical press over just to make it all work. But I think this is good. This is a good start setup uh, for the basin or the mechanical mixer. Eventually, uh, if we look at the quests, the quest is going to require us to get a blaze burner, which we can do once we go into the nether. Uh, and we'll be able to set that up just directly below this and it'll be fine and we can, you know, do the mixing that we're going to need. It's not automated. None of this is automated, but it's usable and that's what matters for us right now. So today what I want to do is start working on getting um, some better inventory going on because coming over here and being like, oh, it's over here and then grabbing stuff out of here and then here, it's kind of a pain, right? We don't want to have to keep doing that. Uh, so I want to get a better inventory system set up. Now, if we look at, you know, our, our, our tried and true favorite refined storage, uh, it ain't it ain't happening, Cap'n. We look at our controller. First off, there's no recipe for this because it's a mechanical crafting recipe to create. There's no crafting. It's mechanical crafting. And we have to get set up with advanced processors, X-Manet cables, slime steel from Tinker's Construct, uh, quartz enriched iron, of course, which is not your standard recipe. It's compressed iron from Pneumaticraft and Nether Quartz. Uh, we need logic units from immersive. We need uh, it, it, we're not going to be getting into refined storage anytime soon. So with that being the case, uh, what other options do we have? Well, if you look at our quest book, the quest kind of uh, the, the expert quest guide kind of tells us, hey, pretty pipes. It's optional to go into pretty pipes, but it's going to definitely be something that we're going to want to get into because it's going to make things easier. So if we get into pretty pipes, if we go over here to our storage, our automation, our automation chain, this is the quest line for pretty pipes. OK, so this is talking about logistics point A to point B. We're going to ignore the experience because I don't have any way to store it. But uh, this is where we're going to be. And it wants us to craft a filter upgrade in order to move on in the quests. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate because we've already made one of those before. Is that a dependency? Uh, no. Actually, it doesn't look like this is the dependency, not the backpack one. OK, so if we were to check mark this, we can do this, right? Yes. OK, we can just jump right into it. All right. So we don't need to do the backpack part. I was like a little concerned because I have to make another one of those filter bases. Not that it was difficult to make before, but I don't want to have to again if I don't if I don't have to. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get crafting. So for pretty pipes, we're going to need a couple things, tin plates, glass, and then shafts from create, uh, which is why we got into create, because, you know, we, we need we need stuff from it. So let's go ahead and grab just miscellaneous things. Let's go ahead and grab some, you know, we'll grab a stack of iron, stack of gold, stack of some glass, whatever. I do need to get more glass cooking at some point because I, I unfortunately used a lot of glass when I was doing my teardowns of all that stuff. Um, but for the quest, it wants us to make 12 pipes. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So that's going to be two sets of these. Uh, and we need our shafts from create. We should have. Yes. We're going to do two sets of these. And you know what? We're going to do three because we're going to need more anyway. So I'm not too concerned about it. And that's going to get us an alchemist delight, which gets us four eyes of ender. That's pretty convenient. We haven't gotten any. I don't think we've had any ender pearls. No, we do have some. I found some in crate chests. That's what it is. Uh, so that takes care of that. So then we have uh, options. OK, there is item routing and item filtering between the two um, speed modules and all that stuff. The way that pretty pipes works, it's very uh, logistic pipes kind of set up and everything. Uh, you can move items between between chests with extraction modules and stuff, we're definitely going to create these so we can experiment and see exactly how this works. I've never played with it fully. So we need low extraction and low retrieval. And I believe that the quest here wants us to make three of each. Yes. So we're going to do low retrieval and then low extraction modules. We're going to do three of each. So that is going to require an observer, which I just now realized is going to gate us. If we want extraction modules, we uh, are stuck. We can't. We need nether quartz in order to make observers. 
So I guess this is going to be a uh, we're going to the nether kind of episode. OK, well, we're going to go get set up with the nether. I need to find a obsidian. I don't have any lava. All right. Well, that is a, uh, a deviation that I was not planning on, and I did not at all realize that it was going to require an observer. So let's go ahead and clean up inventory. I'm going to get some more glass or some more sand cooking. I do have some. I went and uh, mined up a bit of sandy beaches so that we could get that going. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring this. We're going to do this. I do have a gold helmet on me with gourmand, so we're good to go there. I probably should get some leggings. Um, I probably should also, I need to upgrade my iron pick to diamonds so that we can actually mine. Uh, let's get some iron boots going. No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's sequence crafting to get boots. So, yeah. What about chain mail? You are chain plating, which is this. Uh, or do I have any other kind of boot? I mean, I have my slime boots. They have no armor on them, though. Yeah, and diamond boots is going to be sequenced crafting as well. And that's with an enriched diamond. So we're not even going to be able to get that. We need to figure out, like, isn't there, I think, like, Neptune armor. I think it was mentioned in the Discord that uh, this is a great way to get armor if you go fishing. You can get this Neptune's armor from fishing. So I think we may need to set up, like, some kind of auto fisher. Uh, we're not going to be able to use the industrial foregoing one, that's for sure. But maybe there's, like, a... Uh, Maybe there's a vanilla way to auto fish because I think we do have a fishing rod, don't we? Or did I get rid of it? I may have gotten rid of it. Uh, either way, we'll figure something out. OK, but we're not going to be doing iron, uh, though. I, I guess we could do chain mail. It's better than having none. So let's do chain mail boots. Uh, OK, it might be, be not much better than having one. One armor is all that chain mail has, gives us. All right. Forget it. Forget it. All right. I need to go and pull up our map again. I really need to go find this config setting. Uh, there was a comment about it in uh, one of the episodes. I just really need to go look back through and figure out what the comment said. Let's go ahead and upgrade to diamond. Can I do this? Not enchant, but uh, pickaxe head. Can I do this? I do have tier three. Yes. And pickaxe head diamond. Yes. OK, so now I'll be able to get to the obsidian uh put you away i have my little shovel with me yeah okay i don't know why i need the shovel let's go ahead and just sleep real quick uh there's a lava pool right over here so i'm just gonna go pour water onto that with our mlg yolo bucket and then i'll be able to uh you know get the get the obsidian that we're gonna need i'm going the wrong way And yeah, this is going to turn into, let's go into the nether, pray that we're in a super simple biome for nether and get a, some ne nether quartz. Uh, actually, I do have nether quartz. I did find nether quartz. Now that I think about it, I found nether quartz in that basalt biome when we were in the uh, exploring in the water. I don't necessarily need to do this just yet. I do have a magnet, so hopefully the magnet is faster than the lava and it'll pick up all this obsidian before it all gets burnt up. Come on, come on. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, actually, I do have a few few nether quartz. Maybe maybe we don't go to the nether today. Let's go and let's let's go and see what it looks like. You know what? I'm 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 I'm, I'm able and ready to go and see what it looks like. OK. So I don't know if we need necessarily durability on this. So I think I'm going to go for efficiency. Uh, now, efficiency increases the mining speed, correct? Because there's also speed, which increases swing speed. But I want like mining speed. I want this to mine faster now. OK, bucket can go away. We're going to get a flint and steel. If I have one is flint and steel the standard recipe. It is. Uh, so I should have flint here, iron here, bam, bam. Okay. 
And let's go put our nether portal somewhere where we're not going to get attacked by a bunch of mobs and everything and we don't have to deal with it. Um, where do we want to put our nether portal? Do we want to go put it in the village? Sure. We can let them deal with the zombie piglins. It's not like, I mean, they're all dead anyway, to be honest with you. Yeah, all of the villagers, except for the ones I trapped in their house, are dead. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm here, so mobs came and killed them. We do still have villagers inside the houses, though, so we'll take that. And uh, they're still making iron golems, too. Uh, let's put this, like, over here, I guess. Hey, flourishing archwood. Wasn't I looking for that stuff earlier? Kind of meant to put this into the ground instead of having it floating here, but that's fine. Whatever. What is stopping me from being able to jump? You? I guess so. Light it up. And very squarular looking portal. I'm never consistent with my nether portal designs. It is what it is. What are you going to do? Okay, good. Uh, no, not good. We're in a Soul Saint Valley. That is absolutely the worst. <laughs> oh, no. This is the worst absolute spawn that you could have in the nether. Oh, I hate Soul Saint Valleys. Not only do we have a ton of gas, we have a ton of wither skeletons. Oh, man. I need to go get a shield. These guys have bows. All right, let's go home. We need some sort of shield. Can I make a regular shield? Is that a standard recipe? It is. On uh, iron and planks. Give me a shield. That way I can at least kind of sort of protect myself a little bit from them, you know? Not too much, but a little bit. And one thing I want to look up, uh, the feeding upgrade, is that standard? No. Nope. Figures it wouldn't be. Of course it wouldn't be. What am I thinking? It's an expert mod pack. Why would it be a standard recipe for anything? Okay, let's pop back over there. I do have a shield available to me now. I do have this nice molten sword that I can use to try and fend them off, hopefully, somewhat, uh, without hopefully dying. We'll see what happens. What I don't want is my helmet to break, so I kind of think I want to take it off because it is what's made me not have to worry about food at all. We'll see where we end up in here once I get going. Okay, okay, good. We're good to go. We're good to go. Uh, you know what I should do? Get this one out. Because that has fortune on it. Okay, soul soil. I'm going to mine up these bone blocks too. Okay, here we go. Yes, yeah, sucker. Not today. Thank you. Someone else is firing at me? No? Okay, good. Oh, don't walk into the fire. What in the world is that? Oh, goodness. What happened? Something caught me on fire. That wraith. Ugh. Okay, let's eat. Yeah, I don't know what that bee is, but it's very large and very scary looking, isn't it? Like, what in the world was that bee? Okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves some netherrack. We're going to need it for future, you know, purposes, so we'll take a bunch of it. Bam, that's going to get us that. Uh, I got 20 quarts, so we have a bit. Gosh, I hate how slow you walk on Soul Sand 2. Oh, goodness. That's not what I wanted to hear. No. Nope, 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 nope. We're out. We're out. Eat. Go. Run. Run. Get through the portal. Do it. Okay, well, hey. We got the nether quartz I wanted. That's that's what mattered. That is not a very good nether spawn. I need to be much more uh, <laughs> prepared for that. Also, I need to remember that I can just slash home to get home instead of having to go through the portal and be all slow. Did my helmet break? No. Good. Okay. 
So we got nether quartz, and we got it the official way now. That's that's what matters. We got 20 of them. I could probably set this soul sand up outside, too, for our... Uh, I could figure out how that works with the water wheels. Um, mob drops. You go there. You go there. I guess coal's technically a mob drop, ain't it? No. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. You can go there. You go there. And this is why we're trying to fix this, because I'm tired of doing this. Like, ugh. What is a soul bead used for? A weak aut automata core. Left control for description. Well, I'm pressing that and it ain't working. It's used for a couple things, though. A devil familiar. And yeah, automata core. Advanced peripherals. All right. Uh, so we have nether quartz. That's what we wanted. Let's go ahead and grab out our pipes, our pipe wrench and things like that. And let's continue on. Okay. So we need to make a low extraction and a low retrieval. So we're going to need some copper. We're going to need some stone. We're going to need some redstone. I believe I still have stone over here. Yes. Uh, we're going to need copper. And we need three total of these things. So low extraction. So we're going to need six total blank modules. So we're going to need stone slabs. And it's three. So that's two, four, six of these. And then nuggets. Bam. Oh, and it makes three per. So we don't even need to worry about all that. Okay. And then we're going to need uh, six redstone servos. So we're going to need some rods. Now we can use iron, tin, iron, tin, or lead. So let's see what we have the most of. And you know what? I actually have... Uh, tin plates available, so we'll use tin plates. So I'm going to need six tin plates or tin rods. Okay. And that's going to get us the redstone servos, and I should get us six of those. And then we can go ahead and make three of these. Make sure we only do three. Okay. And then the low retrieval module is going to require three observers, which is going to require some andesite alloy and some more slabs. And andesite alloy. I should still have some. Yes. And then uh, this. So we're going to need redstone torches. I'm making three of these. Yeah, so I need nine. I'm supposed to be using my crafting calculator to do all this stuff, but it's kind of a... Eh, for stuff like this, where it's not super duper difficult to craft, it's not a, it's not as needed to pull it out. You know? You know what I'm saying? Three. And there we go. We finished the quest. Okay. So that's going to finish off the quest for here, as well as it should finish off the quest for the gates. Yes. And so then it wants us to make the crafting terminal, which is definitely something I'd like to do if we can. It's going to require an item terminal, which is another observer, some invar. So we should get invar cooking up. Refresh my memory on what invar is again. That is nickel and iron. So it was what? Two nickel to one iron or one iron to two nickel? That I literally just said the exact same thing, but I reversed it. <laughs> it's uh, two iron to one nickel. So two iron and a nickel, two iron, a nickel, two iron, a nickel, two iron, a nickel. Sounds good. Give me that back. You're going to go there. We're going to eat something up. And then we're going to get going. Okay, so the quest. So that's for this. This is the crafting terminal. I definitely want to get a crafting terminal. However, to start with, uh, to start to start with, while that's cooking up, let's go ahead and discuss how this mod works, right? So or let's experiment a little bit. So we have two chests, okay? So we take a chest and we take a chest. The one thing I definitely know about this mod is you do have to have a gap, a, a two block gap at least between inventories. You cannot have a single gap and it expected to work like you can't you can't do this and put a pipe in there it will not work you have to have uh, a two block gap because the pipes the way that they work is you put your modules on one end of the pipe and that basically this whole block is 
the one pipe. And so if you have it on both ends, it doesn't know which way to, to move things and it, it gets con it gets confused. So if we take these and we hook them up, they are now connected. OK, so if I put my dirt in here, nothing happens. Right. Right. If I go ahead and I were to, I believe, right click on this with an empty hand, you can see the pipes uh, UI. If we take one of our modules, so if we say we want a extraction module um, or retrieval, extraction, pulls items from adjacent inventory. So if I were to take this and I were to put it in here, we're going to see it is now pulling the dirt from the one chest to the other. Easy peasy. And if we take it out, it'll stop. Now, the low extraction is only able to do one item at a time, and it's it's pretty slow on as how it does it. Now, the retrieval module is, does the opposite of that. So if we right click that in there, you can replace it and we go into its UI and we say, hey, sir, I want you to retrieve from that chest any dirt. If there is dirt in that chest. Go ahead and retrieve it. And so what it's going to do is pull the dirt out of the chest and bring it over. Note the retrievals are slower. They do not run as fast as the extraction modules do. Uh, there are also other kind of modules. There are filter modules. There are not that. Um, yeah, there's other there's filter modules. There's, uh, you know, MBT, there's tag modules and for filters and stuff like that. But that's that's the basic gist of it. You can use it to to move items around it. They're like advanced logistical transporters, um, though they can be slow. Let's go ahead and get ourselves an item terminal. And check this thing out. OK, so in order to make this, we're going to need a high extraction and a high retrieval. So that is going to be a uh, we don't need these on here anymore. So high extraction is going to be electrum ingots. Now that is gold and silver mixed together. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, we'll do half a stack of gold, half a stack of silver, throw that into the induction matrix or the induction smelter and let those cook up. But that's for the high. We need to also make a medium, which is going to be invar and invar nuggets. So we can go ahead and do that. So we're going to grab our nuggets and then we're going to go ahead and make a medium extraction module and a medium retrieval module. And if we were to put these inside and do our experiment again, we're going to see it's going to run faster and be able to pull more items out. OK. Um, now, it does say high tiers prevent oversending. So what that means is, is that it will it, it's able to see what's inside of the chest. If this chest, if I were to have a chest here with dirt and I put a retrieval module on here, it's going to say, hey, this chest is full. Stop sending dirt because what will happen is, is if it pulls dirt from here and then this inventory is full, it will bounce it back. And then you get bounced in stuff and floating around in the pipes. And it's just it's just not good overall to have that happen. So. Yeah, that's where we're at in higher tiers. Do that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this to high and then upgrade this to high. And there we go. And then the item terminal itself is just going to require invar gears, which means our aluminum nuggets. Two of these. OK. And then we need another observer, which is just going to require some more stone slabs. I am out of stone. That is very unfortunate. Let's go ahead and cook up some more cobblestone. Luckily, I have that upgrade in here so that it, it cooks pretty quick. OK. So that's you. You, uh, you are going to need this. Uh, which requires stone, and that's why I don't have any stone, because I use that to make it. Comparator. Observer. And good to go, except for a redstone servo, which requires some sort of rod. And then we need a machine frame, right? Yeah. And I believe I have extra machine frames from Quest Rewards. You go away. So now we should be able to make a item terminal after I do this. And bam. 
Now, the item terminal, what it does is it allows you to access inventories uh, inside of it. So if I were to set the item terminal up right now, can't do anything, right? It needs to be connected to a pipe network. However, if I go ahead and take these pipes and I were to set this up here and I put this in here, we're going to see I have access to the stuff in the pipes. So if I want this soul bead, I can hit request. It's going to pull that soul bead to me and bam, there we go. And then I can also have it put it back in. Easy peasy. Easy access to all of our inventory. If I connect up all of our chests that we have going on here, I'll be able to see all of the things inside of here. And you can see where this comes in handy. It makes things a lot easier. However, you do have to request the items and it is not the fastest in the world. So like if I want these lightning arrows, right? If I want to request the lightning arrows, it's going to pull them. It's going to come over here and I now have them. Okay. And then I can put them back and it's going to put it into the closest chest that it's available to. I'm not too concerned about it now because once we get this set up, I don't care what chest things go into. I will upgrade all of these to gold and then we don't have to worry about it. Uh, because, you know, I, I, once it's all in, I don't need to have organized chests. I, I'll probably never access the chests themselves again. I'll do everything from the terminal for the most part. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's basically that. So then what we need to do is go ahead and get ourselves upgraded to a crafting terminal so we can actually do crafting from this. So we need to get a crafting table. Do I have a spare floating around? Uh, it does not seem to be the case, but I can make one. Uh, we probably need to convert that over to oak. Uh, another blank module, three more slabs. If I would be out of stone again. Okay, that's that. Okay, and then another redstone servo, another tin rod. And there's that. Okay, so we have a crafting module. And then we just need to get some super glue, which is an iron plate and two um, of the uh, slimes that we have and iron nugget. And we should have slime available to us if I cleaned up my inventory a little bit. I don't need this pipe wrench. There we go. Inventory cleaned up enough to be able to do this, which will allow me to do this, which will allow me to make this which will allow me to grab two string and make a crafting terminal. Now the crafting terminal, just like the item terminal, it just gets connected to a pipe network, but it has a crafting. So if I want to say, I don't know, craft redstone blocks, I can go in here, I can click, and then I can say, hey, I want to request redstone blocks. It's going to go ahead and do the thing. It's going to bring all of them into here. You can see it craft the redstone block, and then I can put it back into the system. And then now we have a redstone block showing up just like that. So it's not the most it, like the greatest system in the world, but it's better than nothing. Right. So what we can do is go ahead and get all of our inventories here set up. And I can route pipes to all of these. Shouldn't have used this deep slate. It takes forever to break. Uh, so I can connect a pipe from the bottom of all of these. We can go ahead and bust into the wall here. You need to go away before I accidentally use you. Though you're almost, I'm almost out of that fortune one. So bam, bam, bam. And then I can cover this back up. And then what is this? It's a deep slate and then bricks and then deep slate again. And there we go. So now if I come over here to the crafting terminal and I clear this out, we should, should see all of our stuff, but we don't for some reason. What's going on? Did I not connect this up? Ah, I didn't, I missed a connection. Ha ha. And there we go. So now we have access to all of our stuff. And, you know, it's not it, like I said, it's not the fastest in the world, but it works. 
it's better than having nothing. So I can go ahead and put all this stuff in here and it's going to go. And like I said, it's just going to filter it into whatever inventory it determines is the best. So it's going to be the closest inventory. So everything's probably going into this chest first, but that's OK. I don't it doesn't bother me now because we are at the point where we can we can afford that. Now, everything is super slow. There is ways to speed this up. Um, if we go back down to our quests for automation, wherever the heck that's at, our next step after this, uh, this is a crafting module. You can do on-demand crafting via machines. Okay. For a vanilla furnace, next recipe needs to be set in the module. Oh, you can actually, it's kind of like auto crafting. That's kind of convenient. Uh, there is speed modules, and then there is also this pipe pressurizer, which is probably what we're going to go ahead and make. The pipe pressurizer drastically increases item speed in the entire network. It does require power, though, so we're going to have to get power set up to this. I don't know how power heavy or power hungry it is, but we'll figure out how to route power to it. Um, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out some way to get power to it. Maybe we'll set it up over here and just run a pipe all the way over to here. That way it's connected to our battery. But the pipe pressurizer will make everything a little faster, and then we don't have to worry so much about how slow this is at crafting. But yeah, that's basically where we're at. Like I said, it's going to dump into any random inventory, but that's okay. So what I want to do is go ahead and get gold. Uh, so it's iron to gold upgrades. And we're going to request to make what? One, two, three of those? Gold ingot not found, iron ingot not found, oh, because it's all over here. Now we got to wait for it to route into a chest, but that's okay. Curious, can I just provide this? <laughs> I can. Give me that. So this just acts as a normal crafting table, too. It's good to know. But then I can just boop, upgrade that to gold, upgrade that to gold, and then, you know, we can go keep going from there. So now if I request this iron ingot not found, I put iron in you. And now I put even more iron in you. Give me my stuff. So it's going to do the craft. It's going to bring that over, but I'm going to go ahead and bring all of this stuff over. So this is all in the system, too. We may need to upgrade this chest over to a diamond chest just so that there's a little bit of extra room. And we can always add more chests to the inventory, too. Like, and now that we have this, we can I can route pipes up to the top here and we can have more gold chests because, again, it doesn't matter where things end up anymore. I can just, you know, place chests and do the thing. So if I were to do, you know, something like this, except for making sure that they're regular chests. And then upgrade those to gold as well. I'll just do that in between episodes. I can connect pipes up to all of these through the back. It's not going to look pretty because it's going to be, you know, they'll be outside, but it'll work and it gets us a bunch of inventory space, a bunch of ability to craft. I'm not going to be able to do that because I have my water wheels set up there. So I'm going to have to do it from this side and it's going to make an absolute mess. Probably should have thought about that before I uh, set these water wheels up here, huh? Yeah. Because if I break this. Oh, no, I have that dirt row there. OK, good. So I can do I can break, you know, this and then go from there. I'm going to need more pipes anyway, so we'll do it. I'll do it in between episodes. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, tips and tricks. Any better ways to speed up this network? I know we can put speed modules, but I believe we have to put a speed module on each pipe on the extraction. So it's not going to be like that's not going to be the greatest. The pipe energizer is going to be the best way to go. So we'll work on getting that next episode. Uh, if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, com comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.